Oh man, I had to get this recording in for the armory on the playlist just because you know what? I am seeing so much gun control bullshit all over the place that they're trying to push. Uh, and this is, you know, it, it's a YouTube video. Americans realize their new horrific reality. And it shows a bunch of people on camera walking into a store and they look at the wall and their, their jaw drops. They can't believe what they're seeing. And it's just people coming in one after another, looking at the wall. Uh, and then it pans out and it shows you that they're actually looking at like the card aisle where there's birthday cards and happy cat day cards and uh, your grandma's birthday card. And then there's a small section of black cards that literally just say, I'm sorry your child died in a school shooting. I'm sorry that guns killed your child. I'm and again, this is like the guns killed your child. Not the person that went and got the gun. Not the psychopath that actually did it. Right? That's the fucking problem here. Is as soon as you start doing this, you forget about the assholes that are actually committing these crimes. And as soon as focus gets away from them, we're not really working on stopping them. Right? We're, 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 that's the problem. Okay? Because here's the thing. You can take all the guns in the world away. There will still be a psychopath that goes and gets a rock and bludgeons a bunch of people. That guy is still going to be there. It's still going to happen. So instead of taking everybody's right away to defend themselves from said psychopath, we need to be looking for the psychopaths. We need to find a way to identify the psychos, the people that are going to do this. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but... We, we see a lot of these kids that do these school shootings. And I'm sorry, but they all look like the same miserable little piece of shit 12-year-old kid to me. They just do. They all have the same damn strung out... I don't, you know, I don't even know what I want to call them. I can't, you know, I can't even describe it off the top of my head. But they all look the damn same. And unfortunately, I guess their parents don't see it. Their parents aren't like, oh, hey, honey, have you noticed that our kid's starting to look more school shooter-ish? Maybe we should do something about that. Has he been writing a bunch of shit in his journal? I mean, like one of, the, one of these last kids, he was actually writing shit in school and the counselors called the parents down and... Like, we actually had a chance at stopping that one if the parents would have taken it seriously. Why don't they pass some legislation there? Uh, so that you know that if you buy your kid a gun and he fucks up with it, you're going to prison. Guess what? There's probably a handful of dads right now that are just like, you know what? We'll wait on that. If it, like, no. So we need to be doing stuff like that instead of just taking everything away from everybody. Uh, it is part of what makes this country so great. That's just IMO, and this is coming from a stab wound uh, gunshot victim survivor. So I did leave a comment here. Guns are not the leading cause of death in America. True, that would be McDonald's. Also true, especially for kids. I know because I work in diabetic care. America is the only place where 12-year-old kids need insulin. I Find me another place where 8 to 12-year-olds need insulin. And it might just be one. It might be like some kind of fluke. It might be a child born with some sort of super rare disease. But not here in America. Here in America, there's just a ton of them. It's called the McDonald's disease. Okay? So... Where are the I'm sorry you died from being fat cards? Because I didn't see those on the wall. Uh, and by the way, I'm a stab wound victim, a gunshot survivor. All this crap is doing is taking away my ability to protect myself and my kids. Because just like last time, the cops will show up after I'm already almost dead, laying on the ground in a pool of my own blood. Sorry, it's kind of hard to remember all the details with blood loss and all, but I know the cops didn't do shit. They even wanted to give me a ticket for trespassing because I ran on some private property to try to save my life. Yeah, I couldn't make this shit up, and this is the reality, folks. I hope you realize before it's too late. Uh, what people don't realize is anybody could be put into the same situation that I was put into. 
Like, literally all you have to do uh, is be in a city like Detroit and drive down the freaking road in, like, the middle of a tornado. When everyone slows down, it's raining so hard that you can't see. And some crackhead will hop in your car and put a knife up to your throat so quick. And it happened. I mean, I don't know. My door wasn't locked. I did not expect some fool to jump in my car while I'm driving down the effing road. And that's what these people do. They look for an opportunity. And once they're there, they're there. Which is why I'm extra cautious Like when I have my kids around. Because a lot of criminals and crackheads will think, hey, if you get them while they got their kids, they'll give you anything. They'll go, they'll drive down to their bank and they'll clean their fucking ATM card out. Just please leave, leave my kids alone. Leave my kids alone. So that just makes you even more of a target. The fact that they think that the, the situation is going to be easier to manipulate and they're going to be able to get more out of you because you are in protection mode. Like I got to make sure my kids survive. Even if I wanted to punch this dude in the face, I'm not going to because my kid could get stabbed or whatever. So unfortunately, it always turns into like the worst possible situation. And then what do you do when that actually happens? Because let me tell you what, I almost got my throat cut from, from this dude just holding the knife up to my throat. All the adrenaline in his crackhead hand was shaking so hard that while he was talking to me and telling me to get the fuck out of my car, his knife was already cutting through my throat. He didn't even realize that. I know he didn't because, like, I just know. He wasn't actually trying to cut my throat. That was just as steady as he could hold the knife there while he threatened me and told me to get out of the car. And I said, sure. I undid my seatbelt first, and I pulled my head out of the car first uh, to get it away from the knife. And as soon as I did that, he put his hand down for a second. He was going to slide over and take my seat and just drive my Cadillac on out. Well, I ripped the keys out of the ignition, and that's when he started stabbing me. He did cut me in the arm. We did fight. Uh, I managed to lock the knife up for a second and get the rest of my body out of the car. And, man, for a second there, I thought he was going to... Uh, he stabbed me, but I really thought, like, the one time he swung this big-ass knife, uh, thank goodness he's a crackhead and he missed. But, like, as his stab was coming down... Uh, it looked like it was going to hit dead center in my forearm, like with a butcher knife. Like I could have lost my arm. I could have had such a bad cut right dead center in my arm. I don't even know. All I know is I saw that thing coming down. I even closed my eyes for a second. That's how scary this shit was. In the middle of being carjacked, you see some shit come down and you know it's going to hit you. And you just, you close your eyes at the very end because you're like, shit, I might just lose my fucking arm right now. And actually what happened is he overswung. So instead of stabbing me dead center in the arm, uh, the blade cut into my arm, but pretty much he just slapped his wrist up against my arm. Thank goodness he overswung. Uh, and after that, by the time he pulled the knife back to swing again, I was already fully out of the car with my keys and he was trying to get out of the car behind me and I did manage uh, what he did is he stuck his arm out with the knife to try to cut me through the car door opening because he was trying to push it open I was trying to push it close and as soon as his arm came out to stab me while I was pushing the door close I actually jumped back and I drop kicked the door <laughs> so I did manage to drop kick the door while he had his arm in it, and I wish I could have given it more. Uh, he did kind of lock his shoulder up against the door, though, so that took away you know, some of the force from it. I was hoping it was enough to get him to drop the knife, but he clutched onto that thing like it was a crack pipe. Yeah, it doesn't work like in the Jackie Chan movies. You can't just slam the car door on someone's hand and the, 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 the knife magically falls out of their fucking hand. Uh, and at that point... I was so desperate and I was looking around on the ground around me. Can I find a fucking brick? Can I find a rock? Can I find a stick? Anything. So here's where it's important. Right there and then, I could have pulled a piece out and said, get the fuck on, dude. And that crackhead would have crawled out of my Cadillac and he would have just took off walking down the street. That's it. 
That's it. Uh, or, no, no or, that's it. That's how it would have played out, right? Instead, um, this girl helps me. She lets me in her house and she's calling the police for me. And this is the most fucked up part, guys. <laughs> grandma comes downstairs with a shotgun and grandma shot me. So the carjackers actually stabbed me to shit and grandma was the one that actually shot me. Now, I wasn't even mad at grandma. Like, she was trying to defend her home. This old lady probably didn't even know what the hell was going on, right? And I have to look at it the other way too. What if I was a home intruder? That old lady had a right to have a shotgun, especially living out in the hood, right? So, uh, yeah, I wasn't mad at that lady at all. I'm more upset with the crackhead that actually robbed me and then ran back to my car and tried to hotwire it, tried to... Uh, he tried to cut a hole through the back seats so he could get into the trunk and take out my 300 pound subwoofers that he was never going to be able to lift, even with an army of crackheads. So I don't know what the hell he was thinking. Uh, and pretty much he just destroyed the car. That's it. All he, all he managed to get out of it was like a $60 CD player that I put in because I had like a couple thousand dollar in dash touch screen and that was at a shop getting serviced. So... I bought like a cheap Walmart CD player to throw in there so I could have some music while I was waiting for my shit to get done. So out of all that, out of attacking me, stabbing me, I mean, for, for a minute there, I was like, I got stabbed. Like, I don't know if I got AIDS now from this fool. Like all of that shit was for a goddamn Jensen Walmart CD player. Like this fool. Oh yeah. And he almost cut my fucking arm off for a $60 Jensen CD player that he probably would have got $20 for or a $25 rock. I don't know. So uh, the reason I'm saying this is because as always, the cops showed up, they showed up late. They wanted to make me the fucking criminal because they, at that point they're like, well, we've been out here for two hours and we don't really have anything and it's just a big waste of time. We need to write somebody something. We need to get someone in trouble. These cops were treating me like dog shit. I was cold. It was rainy. They ran the air conditioning while they stood outside and laughed at me. And then some detectives showed up. Thank goodness my name stands out. They literally said, hey, we heard your name on the radio and we're just stopping by. And I don't know who these people were. It was a chick and a dude. Uh, thank you, Agent Mul Mulder and Scully. I don't, I don't know who the hell, they said they were detectives or something. All I know is they were actually dressed semi-professionally in like suits. And as soon as they showed up, all the piece of shit pigs that were being pieces of shit to me started being really nice to me. They started calling me, sir. I specifically remember one of them that was laughing at me that was like, oh, you know what, sir? I went ahead and put that in, in, into the report for you, sir. And I just... At that point, I was just looking at him like, dude, what the fuck, man? Like, you, it was a nightmare. The whole thing was a nightmare. So bad that I refused medical care there because I, I was like, yeah, if, if I stay here to get medical care and I have to keep dealing with these cops, like, I might end up in jail for nothing. That is how I felt. You should never have to feel like that in America choosing between getting like medical care or going to prison because that's honestly how I felt. I was like, if I stay here any longer, they might just decide, you know what? It's been four hours. Give them the trespassing ci uh, citation or misdemeanor, whatever the hell they were trying to give me. They were literally trying to work that out. What can we give him? Can we give him a court date? Yeah. So uh, I'm armed now. And I don't ever want to lose that right ever again because I've went through that. Uh, on the other hand, I recognize that with great power comes great responsibility. I trust myself with a firearm because I've been exposed to one. I know what's on the other end of that gun. I know what it's like to be shot. I know what it's like to have a gun pointed at you and to hear the gun go off and you hear that gun go off and you see the muzzle move and you know it's pointed at you and you just close your eyes for a second and guess what, you don't feel anything. And it's the scariest fucking shit in the world. You don't feel anything. Because bullets hit you so fast, they typically kill the nerves 
uh, unless you get hit in the bone. So you're, you're not going to hurt from a gunshot. You're going to hurt from, from after the gunshot. Uh, and yeah, that's what happened to me. Uh, the gun went off. I went off running down the street. And then I realized there was a shit, like I was still running in the rain and it was a bunch of cold rain and I could feel all this cold rain mixing with heat on my body. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? It's all this cold rain. It's like if you were to get into a cold shower and you feel some of that water turn hot and you're like, what? what's doing that? And then you realize that you are just bleeding all over the place so damn bad that it's mixing with the rainwater. And that's where you're getting the cold to hot, the hot to cold. And that's when I started feeling my arm and I could literally feel, I could feel uh, the lead under my skin. Uh, I got hit with six of them. So I got very lucky. Three of them went all the way through. Uh, one of them got surgically removed that night. Uh, one of them I surgically removed myself five years later. And one of them is still with me. It's in my arm. It was so deep in my rotator cup that my, the doctors told me, yo, you should be uh, feeling pretty lucky that you can still move your arm like that. And if we cut into that, we're going to have to cut through so much tissue that you're probably not going to be able to move your arm like that afterwards. So... Uh, the best I could do is wait years and years and years for my body to naturally start pushing these bullets back up to the surface so I could fish them out. And that is why it took me five years to get one of them out. And the last one, it's still there. It's still there. Might take it another 10 years. Uh, and then maybe I'll be able to cut it out. Right. But the, the point being is this is really what happened to me. This is my story, and this is why I want all of us to have gun rights. Because at the end of the day, the situation that happened to me is going to happen to people because these people are going to target you. I, I'm, and I'm from Flint, okay? Like, I know about this shit. There are crackheads in Flint that will rob you with a syringe. They will run out and be like, look, motherfucker, I got AIDS. There's AIDS on this syringe. If you don't give me all your money, I'm going to stick you with this. And you're going to have AIDS too. They will literally do that. There was some guy running around in Flint uh, breaking off the AIDS infested syringes that he was using. And he was sticking the needles into pay phones, into the change dispenser. So if you try to make a call and you reach in there to see if your quarter went through or if, any, if the phone spit out any change... Well, you would get a prick on your finger and congratulations, you now have AIDS. I have heard of people getting robbed with that. Hey, give me all your money or I'm going to stab your kid with a syringe and your child's going to have AIDS. What would you do? Uh, about the only thing you can do is pull a goddamn piece out and say your piece. And I'm sorry, but I will go to court any day and get tried by a jury Instead of letting my, uh, my son get stabbed by a crackhead's dirty uh, heroin infested, AIDS infested syringe. So though, that, that's what I've come to terms with. Uh, but hey, obviously with everything that's going on right now, pretty soon you're, you're not going to have that choice. When that crackhead runs out with that dirty syringe, you're just going to have to give him everything you got. Here's my debit card. Here's my pin. Take my keys. Just drive away in my car and go clean out my bank account, please, since there's really nothing else I can do without running the risk of like me and my family getting absolutely destroyed over this. So again, I'm not seeing any cards on the wall. <laughs> I'm sorry you got stabbed and got AIDS from a crackhead. I don't see any of those cards on this wall. So I think they need to start making other cards other than like, I'm sorry that your son died in a school shooting. It is very tragic. It is. But let's actually do something about the problem. Let's do something about these little psychopath losers that feel like they need to just walk in there and do that. Okay, here's the thing. I support anyone's right. If you want to, if you want to stop living, if it's that bad for you, do you go for it. 
but do not take it out on other innocent people. That's just terrible. That to me is the definition of evil. You're such a petty piece of shit that you would actually try to impose your suffering on others that haven't even probably earned it. But uh, whatever, people are too crazy to see that. And we need to identify those people. That is what we need. We need a way to identify those people and that will actually stop school shootings. Matter of fact, uh, one of the easiest and dumbest ways to do it, in my opinion, okay, don't let people buy guns till they're 21. Fuck, make them wait till 25. I don't care. I don't. Okay, because here's the thing. Uh, if some of these kids couldn't go get guns until they were 21, these kids that wanted to shoot up the school and kill all the bullies that were mean to them or whatever stupid childish reason these idiots come up with, guess what? They couldn't do it. If they had to wait till they were 21, well, by then, school's over. And if you want to go hunt down these people that were mean to you in grade school, good luck finding them. You're not just going to be able to walk into a crowded school anymore. So maybe we shouldn't be selling uh, firearms to people that are still going to school uh, and yeah, that would definitely, I think, solve at least a lot of them. Uh, we're still going to have a psychopath here and there that's going to go get a gun and is just going to go try to go to any crowded place and shoot a bunch of people. That's going to happen as well. And guess what? This last time that that happened, that idiot got killed in the bathroom choking on his own blood like the little bitch he is because there was somebody at that mall that actually had, I think, a 9 millimeter on them. And as soon as this little fucker started coming out of the bathroom shooting people, uh, what was his name? Elijah? Elijah Dickinson dicked him the fuck down. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? Give that guy a fucking job at Uvalde. He could be the new school crossing guard, whatever. That is what we need. Because guess what? That guy, he would have went in there and he probably would have taken that school shooter out. Unlike the cowardly cops that stood there and didn't do shit. Why aren't there cards on the wall for that? How come we're not talking about these cops? How come none of these fucking cops are getting fired for standing around for 72 fucking minutes while a bunch of children get shot and killed? And these cops, we, we don't hear anything about it other than just, yeah, it didn't go right. How come we're like we're wasting resources making fucking paper cards to put on a wall with hurtful things to uh, get people's attention? Like, why aren't we doing anything about these stupid cops that literally watched children get killed for 72 minutes? I couldn't even fucking do that. I couldn't even do that. So, so why aren't we doing something about that? Why aren't we actually doing something about this? I have kids. They, they go to schools like I have kids. So I'm all for solving this problem without shitting all over our gun rights and our, and not even, they're not even gun rights. They're the right to defend yourself. You don't even have the right to defend your property. Okay. I, if somebody's in here trying to steal my car, I don't have the right to pull my gun out and shoot them. I can only shoot them if they're going to take my life or my children's life or somebody's life. So just, you know, so we got that straight, uh, you know, they're not, they're, they're not taking away guns. They're taking away our right to actually protect ourselves. So that's what I'm getting at here. And this is my opinion as a stab wound gunshot survivor. And this is what I think of it. Um, and we need to, we need to not lose our rights, period. Um, there, also beyond that, there is a historical reason why we have to have guns. I'm sorry, but there's a checks and balances system in America. We've learned about it since for effing ever ago, period. That's all you heard, uh, going to school here in America is checks and balances, checks and balances. I'm just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill because, uh, four groups of people have to vote on me because they have to check and balance each other. And then like, even the president can't just be like, Oh, well, I'm making this law and I'm making that law. No, cause Congress gets to check and balance him and vice versa all the way around. And this is the checks and balances system. Uh, so that some corrupt ruler doesn't take over our government and pretty much just tells us what to do, right? That is why America is supposed to have a militia. We are 
there's a reason for it to exist. That is why this is so important. Uh, because at the end of the day, if our own government turned tyrannical on us, I know this is some crazy big stuff, but if they did, well, we would at least have the good old boys from the Michigan militia to, I don't know, give us some cover fire. <laughs> so, and it's crazy because some of the arguments they're making now is, uh, well, these are weapons of war. And no, these are weapons that you have to have to be able to potentially compete with the army here in case our tyrannical government gets out of bounds. Like we should be able to protect ourselves. I hate to say it, but even from our government, if our government is acting in an illegal and criminal fashion, we should still be able to defend ourselves. And guess what? I could tell you right now that that is just not the case. So calling like assault rifles and things weapons of war, they're fucking not. Not compared to actual weapons of war and the actual gear that our government has. Did you know that most people have a semi-automatic assault rifle? Cool. They have full auto, folks. They have full auto. Okay? So, well... Somebody could shoot a couple shots at an FBI agent. The FBI agent gets to shoot 800 shots back at you in the same two seconds. Oh yeah, they also have like real sniper rifles uh, and all of that good stuff. So the, just when I hear them talk about weapons of war, it is just absolutely effing stupid. Okay, because the militia would not win any damn war against the government with the, the weapons that they currently have. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that our government has the big guns. They always have. They always will be. Uh, they always will have. Sorry. Uh, and the point being is, this is just part of the checks and balances system. And this country was designed like that. So, uh, there's some history there. At least the, that's the way that I see it. At least that's the way I remember it from school. Checks and balances. That's really all that stands out in my head. Checks and balances. Anyway, uh, so this is what I think about it, and uh, I don't know, let me know what you think. Am I right? Am I wrong? I already know I'm crazy, but uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me, let me know what your situation was, too. Everyone's going to have a different opinion on this just based on what they've lived through in life, right? Maybe you've never been stabbed. Maybe you've never been shot. Maybe you've never had to deal with the police. And then I could see you being like, well, wait, 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 wait. Nobody needs to have a gun because the police have guns and I'll just call them and they'll come and protect me because you've never actually been in a situation where, okay, they'll be here in 15 minutes, which is, you know, giving the criminal five minutes to rob you and kill you and 10 minutes to get away and uh, they'll they'll write that report up for you when you're dead. That's what I learned from dealing with the police. So anyway, best of luck to everybody. Best of luck to us all right now. We need to keep our rights to defend ourselves. Later.